Hi, I'm CC, and I'm one of the artists who worked on the Hermitcraft TCG. I'm really proud of what we made, so I just kind of want to talk about it. So, the TCG, or trading card game for long, was initially created on the Hermitcraft server by Vintage Beef. You're able to make 128 by 128 block pixel art, and then use a map to create images that you can place on your walls. Beef used this mechanic to design trading cards that can be played with, and the cards looked a little lot like this. The game launched in December of 2022 with just a smidge over 100 cards, and it was a massive success. Hermits loved it, viewers loved it, I didn't really understand it, but once I did, I loved it. There was one thing on everyone's mind though. What if it was real? Now this is where I become involved. Four artists were hired. Ivy, Ludovico, Pillowdash, and me! And now we get to the fun bit. Making the cards. Wait. But how? We weren't exactly sure where to start, but we were given a template by the printing company. The thing is, when I first looked at the template, my brain went smooth. So let's do a quick rundown. Firstly, we have the cut line. This is the shape and size of the card. On the inside you have the safe area. Any important information has to be inside this box as to avoid it being cut out if there is misprints or misaligned cuts. Important info includes any text or detailed parts of the art. The outer part is the bleed area. This will be cut off entirely, but it's best to still have some of the design here, just so if there was a misprint you wouldn't get gross white lines around the edges. It all makes sense to me now, but initially it definitely confused us. We got some thick chunky borders which technically could have worked, but it just looks silly. The cards are 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches, which is the same size as the Pokemon card actually. There's also four types of cards, each of which will need a unique template. Standard Hermits, Rare Hermits, Effects, and Items. For the standard cards we went for a basic art box with room for text. Name and HP at the top, space for the attacks here and here, along with some free space for text at the bottom. Along with a white circle at the top for the cards typing. We also experimented a lot with locations of text. The names and HP were pretty much set from the get-go, but we also needed to include the card number, type of entries, and an artist signature. Eventually we settled on placing them here, here, and here. We also ended up going for a yellow and white colour scheme to match the maps that the Minecraft version of the game used. Oh, and by the way, when I say we, I'm using it in the royal sense. Ivy did most of the work on the templates and borders. I'd go to bed and just wake up to see 17 variations to pick from. She made the process way smoother and saved us weeks of work. The effect cards were designed mostly in the same aesthetic as the Hermit cards. Though there was a lot less information on these cards, so we had a room for a bigger art box. Items would all need descriptions, but font was something we had to consider. For all the text on the standard Hermit cards, we used Badaboom Pro BB, which worked fine for titles and numbers, but for full paragraphs, it looked a bit busy and hard to read. So we ended up switching to Open Sans Semi Bold for long paragraphs. Finally, we added a Star Bloom to have consistent backgrounds for all the cards. Item cards kept the same white border in Star Bloom, but we wanted to keep the colour scheme of the item cards on the server. Rather than having the yellow, we matched the colours of the respective item, which did cause some problems. The item cards on the Hermitcraft server used blocks and materials specific to the game. We ended up changing pretty much every item to a tool that matched the typing. The issue came from tools that didn't match the original item's colour scheme from the game. We ended up renaming it to Engineer, and we decided to use a wrench to represent it. The issue is that wrenches usually aren't red. I experimented with making the wrench a reddish brass colour, but I couldn't get it to look appealing, so we decided to make the handle red instead. We ended up doing the same for a few other items like Terraformer and Explorer. Finally, we have the rare cards. We wanted these to be full art cards right from the get-go. It just makes them feel cooler and more special. Initially we experimented with keeping the white border, but ended up scrapping it pretty early on. It would have been nice if we could just turn off the overlay on the standard card and boom, you've got a rare, but unfortunately it wasn't so easy. The rare cards all have special moves, and those special moves would need a description, meaning we'd have to adjust the room for the text. And due to the background now being detailed art, the text became a lot less readable. Initially we tried just using outlines to help make it more readable, but in the end we settled on a semi-transparent black box. And that's all the templates made. The next step was the fun one, doing the art. In total there was 104 pieces to be done, split between the four of us. 52 hermits, 42 effects, and 10 item cards. It'll take far too long to go into depth with every piece, so let's run through them quickly with a tier list. First up, Cub. Cub went through a real firework phase, so it felt right to represent it. I'm a big fan of this one. False. 
I wanted to draw a flying from the get-go, and I initially tried more complex poses, but I like the simplicity of the one I went for. Jem specifically requested an elven princess design, which made me think it'd be fun to try and render the piece in a fairy tale storybook style. I used a paper filter over the top with more simplistic shading, and I really like it. Hypno. I like the composition and colours, but I could have done a more dynamic pose. Iskal. I love the pose on this one, but I had a continuous struggle with all the cards to make the backgrounds and characters interact. You can almost see the layers on it. Joe. This is my favourite. Also my first, which may make me biased. I adore the pose, it really suits him. Since it was my first card, I experimented a lot with the style, and I love where it turned out. I drew Mumbo in around half an hour. The next few hours were spent faffing with the background, but I like it. Pearl. I drew an entirely different card before deciding I didn't like it and starting again. The light bouncing off her in the environment definitely helped sell she was actually there. Stress. Don't love this one. Not 100% sure why. It was one of the last ones I did though, so I didn't have as much time on it. XB. He had just built a zoo, and I wanted to draw a parrot. Do I need any more reason than that? Exuma skinned the Doom guy, so I had to redesign him. Initially, I experimented with more sci-fi armor, but ended up using the Outer Wilds spacesuits as my inspiration. Zedaf. I actually got to work directly with Zed for this one. We went for a combination of a lot of his thumbnails. Though, I think I may have too many elements competing for attention. I probably could have emphasized the foreground more and pushed less important details into the background. TFC. By far my most popular card, and I can see why. I really wanted to get this one right. My initial sketches had him more rough and tough, but I wanted to represent his great laugh. I never thought of you as being big headed. <laughs> <laughs> now the effect cards. Most of the cards are pretty straightforward. I don't really dislike any of them. I was tasked with drawing three different buckets, so it's kind of hard to get excited about any of them. I did most of these on my stream actually, so if you're interested, you can check out my VODs in my live section. And we have the item cards, which I've already covered. Now, I can't really talk about the process the other artists had, but I can say which of their cards are my favourite. I adore the colours that IB uses, they're all so bright and fun. My favourites are probably Beef, Tango and Doc. I love the way she depicts Doc in particular, it's super unique. Lodo had some really cool cards, especially Doc, Exuma and Efo. The lighting effects and the thick outlines really make him pop. I also love his wolf card, his animals are so good. The amount of times that Pillow would post the most beautiful piece of art in Discord and then say it's a work in progress was ridiculous. Pillow's sketches look more finished than my completed pieces. My favourites are definitely Joe, Tango and Scars, just look at how cute Jelly is. All three of them are such talented artists and I felt like such an imposter next to them all, but seeing that art made me want to get better and improve, and I definitely did. Something I should probably know is that I'm pretty new to art as a whole. At the time of Beef messaging me, I'd only been drawing for around a year and a half. I was so shocked that Beef messaging me that I initially thought I was being scammed. I'd only done one commission for a friend, so I was severely panicked at the thought of being paid to make something that would be bought and seen by thousands of people. I feel so lucky and I'm so honoured to have been given the opportunity to work with so many amazing people, so I just want to say thank you Beef. Though art wasn't my only job. I also compiled the cards, writing all the text, formatting all the items and organising all the files. I volunteered for the job, but I had no clue how much extra work it would be. Thankfully, Ivy gave me some fantastic templates to work with, though I did have to edit all of them after we were able to expand the size of the cards, but having the base to work off made it a whole lot easier. I ended up compiling the cards in Clip Studio Paint, which probably wasn't the best idea. Photoshop or Illustrator would have had some much better tools to do this, but hey, work with what you have. Beef gave me a few documents that had a lot of the info I'd need, but I actually ended up using the Hermitcraft Wiki to get a lot of the information quickly, so thank you very much to the people who put that together. There were three major pitfalls in compiling the cards. Number one. Having to resize all the templates was a major hassle, but it dramatically improved the presentation of the cards, and also taught me a lot about the most efficient methods to improve my workflow. I do wish that I hadn't already compiled and rendered about 15 cards before needing to redo it all again though. Number 2. On the Hermitcraft server all the cards used shortened versions of everyone's names, and initially we kept that for the real version, but the Hermit's request we used the long ones, and yeah, I'm not sure why we didn't use the long ones from the get-go. Only had to re-render 10 cards that time, so I'm improving. Number 3. I had to re-render 103 cards. Right back at step 1, I made a Google spreadsheet for all of us to keep track of the cards we needed. During this step, I entered every card we needed to draw. I accidentally missed the fortune card, meaning for the entire time we had a number out of 103 in the corner of our cards, rather than 104. We had pretty much finished every single card, and then Beef noticed. I had to ask Lodorigo to draw a fortune card last minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Actually, fun tidbit. Initially the book of fortune cards art was for the book of efficiency, but the art actually made a bit more sense of the fortune cards, so we switched it and Lodo instead made a new piece for the efficiency card using the item icons that I made earlier. It wasn't actually that big of an issue, it was an easy but tedious thing to fix. It just came at a time when I was ready to relax as we'd completely finished the project, so I had a mad dash that night to sort it. 
And that's it for the base set. We started production on February 24, 2023, and pre-orders went up on April 14th. Production finished around a month later when pre-orders were finishing, so pretty damn quick. Though that's not the end of it. Not long after we began production on a second set of cards, but this time we expanded the artist to include more for the community. The goal was to make a collector's edition of the game with new art by these new artists. These new cards came in special display units. They're not necessarily designed for play instead as a nice decoration, and nearly all of the Hermits volunteered to sign some of the cards, with some of them even signing every single one. There's also a small bonus that all the artists included, but you'll have to wait until they arrive to find out. And one final note before we go to the credits. I asked all the artists if they wanted to make an artist banner with me. Just something to use as a celebration of completing the TCG. But Luke from Creo ended up offering to turn it into an actual poster to sell, a metal one at that. And with that, I think everything's been covered. Unfortunately, I can't talk too much about the printing process, but Luke did make an email that was posted to everyone who pre-ordered the cards. For those who are interested, I have linked every single artist who has worked on the TCG in the description, so make sure you go support them. Or else. <laughs>